My name is Ali Mud. I go to Flowing Wells High School, class of 2021, and coronavirus has greatly affected my family. For me, I've had to switch to online schooling, and I've had to start working with my dad because he hasn't been getting any workers um, at night because of self-quarantine. And the question I've decided to ask today is how has coronavirus affected American society? And I think this question is important because when coronavirus does eventually die down, we're still going to have to deal with future instances like this. And I think it'd be better if we were prepared for the kind of societal changes that come with these kinds of things. So the first suspected cases of COVID-19 were from the WHO country's office in Wuhan, China, who reported a cluster of viral atypical pneumonia in, within the district on December 31st, 2019. In the following month, WHO would keep track of first deaths, new cases in other countries, and try to establish a curve. On January 9th, 2020, the WHO reports that the officials in China have determined that the outbreak was caused by a novel coronavirus. A coronavirus is a type of virus that can infect a wide variety of animals, and this time the animal in question was bats. Now, the CDC was aware that the virus was active during the month of January, but the WHO only urged cautions to countries within the area. I will dub these first series of events the first phase. There is a massive amount of ambiguity behind the coronavirus, and the American public has not yet been made aware of the issue. And for the few that have been informed, they haven't been told to make any changes in their lives yet. On February 11th, 2020, the WHO officially dubs the new virus COVID-19. Massive amounts of funding were poured into designating specialists, creating viable tests, and mobilizing personal protect protective equipment for the healthcare workers in need. Experts in disease spread and control were recruited from across the globe, including those from European, Asian, and American backgrounds. On February 29, 2020, the WHO releases guidelines for quarantine across the world, hoping governments will be able to implement them quickly. Despite their efforts, however, the WHO labels COVID-19 a possible pandemic on March 11, 2020. I call this the mobilization phase, as efforts to try and prevent the spread of the virus are made by increasing manufacturing rates for equipment, building up hospitals, and starting research. However, for America, it would be more appropriate to label it the panic phase. America started to go into hard quarantine throughout March, depending on your city or state. A wave of panic overwhelmed the United States, with grocery stores running out of cleaning products, non-perishable foods, and most alarmingly, toilet paper. All non-essential businesses were told to close throughout quarantine. But this is when the health of the country's economy had come into question. Were we to listen to the experts and stay closed or sacrifice public health in order to keep the economy healthy? Debates got more and more heated as the quarantine continu continued, with a few riots and protests supporting the economy and individual rights across the country. Nearing the end of quarantine, which once again varied depending on the city or state, a cluster of violent instances of police brutality were highlighted by the news, the most impactful one being the death of George Floyd on May 25, 2020, where a police officer knelt on his neck for 8 minutes and 47 seconds over a counterfeit $20 bill. What followed after were large-scale riots all across the country, along with police intervention at many of them. This is the movement phase, labeled after the Black Lives Matter movement, along with the later police reform movement. While there have been many large-scale developments after this time, I believe we are still within that phase, and hopefully we will enter the next phase of reform and recovery. Reverend Al Sharpton had stated during Floyd's memorial, the world was free of distractions, and this is what made the movement so powerful. Hopefully, if we free ourselves from distractions once again, we can achieve recovery as soon as possible. So as for final thoughts and conclusions, I don't think my research will benefit uh, the medical or clinical trials uh, that help to cure COVID-19, but I do think it is important to record the history of a pandemic so that we can see how society changes during these times and we can learn from our successes and failures. And one lingering question I still have is how will this end? Because obviously we're still very much in it, uh, America is at least. And um, I think it's going to be a very important lesson to see who comes out of this and who doesn't. Thank you.